to you. And then he qualifies who he's talking about. He who believes in me. So if you're sitting in your vehicle right now, or you're sitting at your desk, or you're sitting wherever, that if you believe in Jesus, then this scripture is talking to you. He says, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. God has an incredible plan for you to do amazing things. God chose you. You're not anonymous. You have a name. There's a reason you have a name. We don't call you anonymous. Yo, anonymous, can you come over here, please? Everybody's not named John Smith. Now, there are some people who are, and God bless you. But not everybody's named John Smith. Not everybody's named anonymous. We have names. There's a reason there are more than 2,000 names in the Scripture that we know. Because God wanted us to know the name of Gideon and Joshua and Mary. The angel didn't appear to some random teenage girl and say, Random teenage girl, you're going to do amazing things. The Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. And you're going to birth the Christ child, random girl. Random girl, you're going to always be talked about. But nobody's ever going to know your name. No, that's not what it says. We know her name. Her name was Mary. There's a reason we know her name. Because God wants us to know that he uses individuals for great and powerful and mighty purposes. So don't let your own thoughts of inadequacy disqualify you from your calling. Maybe it's time for you to press into the great things that God has for you. And to not speak negatively, but to speak positively. To not pray the problems, but to actually pray the promises that God has for you. Just because you see somebody else doing something great doesn't mean you can't do something great too. Just because you see somebody who's doing something amazing. The problem with a lot of us is we begin to compare ourselves to other people. And we say, well, you don't understand. I can never do that. Well, guess what? Genius, you probably can. Because God didn't call you to do that. Right. I remember one night I, I was sitting. I'd been invited to a conference. And Christine Kane from Hillsong, Australia, was speaking at this conference. And I'd been invited a, as a pastor. And so I'm sitting on the front row. And I brought my biggest Bible, you know, because as pastors, we got to look like we got it together. I had all the, like, colored highlighters. And she was like tell them to turn to Lamentations, and I couldn't find Lamentations, so I was like in Matthew, highlight, act like I had the scripture. I'm sorry, I apologize, I said it on air. I apologize. I'm the pastor, but we're not always perfect, folks. And she's up there preaching, she's from Australia, and she says this, she says, Lately God has been waking me up every morning at 4 a.m. for the past four months, from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. God has been telling me the deep secrets of the scripture. I don't know why she kind of sounds like a pirate to me, but she kind of does. And if you know Christine Kane, please, oh dear Lord, I just said that on the air. Please don't tell her if you know her. She's not a pirate. She just, that's my impression of her. She just says from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m., God's been waking her up and speaking to her. And on the outside, I'm going, oh, hallelujah, like pastors are supposed to do. I'm going, oh, come on, preach. That's a good word. But on the inside, I'm going, 4 a.m. to 8 a.m.? Dear Lord, I can't even pray from 4 to 8 minutes some days. In fact, sometimes I get to the bottom of a chapter in my daily scripture reading, and I forget what I even read. And if you're honest with yourself, you're sitting there right now going, I did that today. You read the whole chapter and then you forget because you were thinking about what you had to do later on that day. And then you ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you'll have to read it again. And he's like, yes, you do. I'll sit there listening to this incredible, powerful woman of God preach about her deep prayer life. And I got to tell you, I felt inadequate. I sat there and I thought, God, if we can clone a sheep... Why can't we clone Christine and just send her to all the churches and just let me die and go to heaven now? Because I don't know that I'll ever be able to do that. My ADHD kicks in and I can't even hardly pay attention to what I'm thinking right now. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I called Christine to do what I've called Christine to do. But I've called you to do something different. I think sometimes we, we make an excuse and say, well, I'm just waiting on God to show me what I'm supposed to do. 